Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 12, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording here from Sands Fire in Washington, D.C. Today on Tuesday evening, we will have our uh, keynote here at Sands Fire, and this will be a walkthrough to how to use the data on the Internet Storm Center website, how to contribute data. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to tune in. A link will be in the show notes. Last Friday, Rogers, a major telecom company in Canada, suffered a major outage affecting uh, pretty much all of their voice and data network. Uh, so with this outage, much of Canada really was without phone or data service. At this point, there isn't really sort of a very detailed postmortem from Rogers. There is just a message from the CEO that does specify that this outage was called by some kind of maintenance update to some of their core routers, which then in turn caused these routers to fail. And the remaining routers, which the traffic was redirected to, did not uh, handle the traffic. Now, aside from the large scale of this outage, one reason I mentioned this is that it did affect a cellular as well as landline connectivity, uh, which of course uh, puts in question some uh, backup plans that you may have if you, for example, count on cellular connectivity in order to back up your uh, normal landline connectivity, whether that's a DSL or whatever, if both services are provided by the same company. This is further complicated by the fact that uh, often you find that in the seller network space, you have uh, virtual operators that really just are reselling a particular major operator's network. So you may still not have the redundancy that you believe you have. It's a good time to review this aspect of your business continuity planning. And then we got more trouble with remote keyless entry systems for cars, in particular Honda, the rolling pwn attack as it's called by the researchers discovering it. Uh, one uses the handle uh, Kevin2600. Is apparently valid against uh, Honda cars going back to 2012 and may also affect cars from other manufacturers. The root issue here is these rolling codes that are being used in most keyless entry systems. Each time the button on the remote is pressed, a new code is being sent. And well, this is supposed to prevent a replay attack. So if an attacker captures a particular code, well, it cannot be used again. In the past, there were some attacks where, for example, a denial of service was used in order to disrupt reception of a code. So that way the code wasn't received yet and could be reused. But this attack's a little bit different. First of all, in order for this to work, uh, there is sort of a little bit fuzziness as far as the sequence uh, goes, because it's possible that a user will press the button while it's out of range. And so uh, the car has to accept a certain window of uh, these codes. Secondly, whenever a code is being sent, the counter is then resynchronized uh, based on the code that's being received. And that's apparently sort of the issue that's being exploited here, where this resynchronized is being used to actually move the counter back, which then makes some of the older codes that the attacker may have intercepted before usable again. Honda stated that there is no patch coming for this, so not much you can do as a user. There have been a couple other people that have demonstrated that this attack actually works based on the information provided here by Kevin2600. And apparently there is also a black hat talk coming from researchers in Singapore that apparently describes a very similar issue, maybe the same issue. So possibly that this was discovered uh, independently twice. And for everybody here using GitHub Runners and Azure Virtual Machines, uh, Trend Micro has an interesting report where they're looking how attackers are leveraging GitHub Runners in order to mine crypto coins. Now, uh, this is a little bit sort of uh, tricky how uh, this is being exploited. Uh, 
GitHub runners are essentially virtual machines that GitHub runs in order to automate your pipeline. And well, yes, you can execute code in these virtual machines, which of course means you can also mine crypto coins in these virtual machines. The big problem here, according to Trend Micro, is not so much the attacker doing it on their own account, pretty much their own dime, but if an attacker is tricking a victim into importing their GitHub actions via GitHub's marketplace and then essentially running unintentionally, most likely the crypto coin mining script on the victim's runner. There are apparently about uh, 1000 of these malicious uh, actions out there. So, uh, this point, no real evidence here from Trent Micro, as far as I could tell, that this is actually being abused uh, to hit victims, but it uh, could be sort of someone getting ready for it or someone trying to find ways to convince the victims into including these malicious uh, scripts in their workflow. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.